So the story goes, I was just a young, young boy and we were riding through Death Valley, California in an MG convertible in the middle of the summer, something like 112 degrees and it overheated. We learned you run the heater to help cool off the engine, but it was a miserable, miserable day, but a terrific story. Why am I telling you that? Because our dear friends at Michael Miller Fabrics have this incredible new MG fabric. Check it out. It is awesome. This print is amazing. And before we make today's project, I just want to spend a moment and show you how incredibly cool this stuff is. So let's start with this amazing panel we have and the printing on this. This is the benefit of digital printing. It is incredible. It looks just like a photograph. Look at this beautiful little old convertible. Oh, I love it. And my other favorite thing before we go on too far is how cool this fabric is printed along the side. It looks like a cool tweed, like the upholstery inside of the vehicle itself. So Again, I think this is super, super cool. We have a pillow panel. So that's our big cheater panel there. That's a 27 inches, I believe, by the 45 across. Now we have the pillow panel. So you can see on one side, you get the antique and kind of the uh, sport car, beautiful red there version. And the same, but in opposite format on the other side, of course. And that's what we're going to be using today to make our easy, easy, super simple pillow construction. Uh, and then we have three other prints that go with our fabulous M our British uh, racing cars, motor cars, uh, fabric from Michael Miller. And that is this beautiful print you see right here. Then we have the cool printed uh, cars there that you see, but with the nice kind of antique background. And we're gonna use some of this today. And then also you have the all antique background, the super old looking cars, and I love that as well. And we're gonna match that with the antique version on the pillow panel. So we have two different choices we're gonna work with. And again, I'm just super excited to share with you this great licensed property we have at Michael Miller Fabrics. I am Rob Appel, welcome to Making It Fun. Let's get started. So here it is, the super simple pillow, and I'm going to teach you a couple of really, really cool things in the basic, basic construction. Doesn't it look fantastic? Notice that there's no big old dog ears going on on this thing, and that's what I really want to teach you all today, and that's why we're going to do super, super basic. So that's that awesome antique version with it on the back, and you can see here is basically our sleeve where we're going to put our hand in, and we're going to remove our pre-purchased pillow form, and I love buying them ready-made like that because they're so easy to work with. Now, because I've said that, I want to first show you the second thing I wanted to show you, which is how to measure in case there was no packaging or you weren't quite sure on this, or you're just wondering how should I, what? Okay. It's a 16 inch pillow form. If you're not sure of that, you're gonna me measure from the seam to the seam of where they constructed it. Go ahead and pull a nice soft tape measure over and across the top, and I'm hitting right at 16 inches there also. So it's a 16 inch pillow form, and unlike quilting, we're not gonna add anything to that math. So we're gonna go ahead and dismantle. We're gonna make the more modern version here with the hot rod color. So just a quick reminder, in case you just pulled up to the party, right? So I have have the pillow panel and this has both the antique version and the awesome red convertible on there. So we're going to go ahead and use, let me just kind of, there we go. And now we're going to go ahead and use this and this wonderful uh, version that has the colored cars on there also to make the next pillow. So like I said, what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and first create our squares. I'm going to show you how to tend to those corners in a little bit. Mathematically, I've already measured across this square and from the inside of the print line to the inside of the print line here is exactly 12 inches and we need 16 inches. So that means I need to add four inches to the top, bottom sides. So let's split that four and a half, two inches to each side. So what I'm gonna now do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna lay my ruler and I'm gonna make sure it's nice and square all the way along the inside. Remember, it's uh, the first measurement was from the inside of that line. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and make sure everything's lined up nice. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut all the way through here. And we're gonna work our way around the design, but please note how much I absolutely love this print that looks like the upholstery of the vehicles. So I'm saving this. You can see I didn't cut into it when I made the first pillow. So now I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna find two inches and just slow down, decaffeinate, make sure you know what you're doing here. So it's two inches again from the inside of the perimeter. 
set this aside, save it for later. I think this would make fabulous piping, uh, but I want to do a super simple version today. So we're going to stick with the super simple version, trim this down two inches all the way around. And don't worry if that MG logo up there is going to get cut kind of through because like I said, we're going to tend to the corners in just a second, but we're going to do it with both pieces already ready to go before we get into the corner. So let's just go ahead and set this aside for a moment. Now what I'm going to need is a 16 inch strip of this wonderful print with the cars colored on it like that. So what I can do in this situation, I like to always use as long of a cut as possible. So I'm just gonna take this right now and I'm gonna trim, but what I'm focused on is the line on my ruler um, is on the folded edge. So I'm cleaning this edge up first. I'm just gonna clean that up nice and square. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide this over to the zero marker on my map because I don't have a ruler that's 16 inches or larger. Um, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna worry about the other lines on the mat. I'm using my zero marker hidden over here underneath the bed of the machine. The advantage of having such a large sewing machine, I love it. So I'm over here at zero. Now I can come all the way down to the 16 inch and this is the trick. Again, I'm not gonna worry about the lines on the mat. I'm gonna worry about having a nice straight line. I'm gonna come down to where I know I'm 16 inches down here, but I'm gonna now use the fabric itself to make sure everything stays square. Because I'm making such a long cut, I'm gonna put my hand up here further to hold the ruler. And I'm left-handed, so I'm gonna go slow, meaning I'm right-handed, I'm cutting with my left hand, so I'm gonna go nice and slow. Let's make sure we got that. Okay, cool, let's set this aside. And hit the brakes, please. We're not gonna just cut this into to a square. What we need, actually, is we need to create, where'd it go? We need to create the pocket, the sleeve. And I like technically six inches of total overlap when I'm making a pillow roughly this size, again, 16 inches square. So therefore, if I was at 16 and I add six, I'm at 22. So now what I really want is I want two rectangles that are 16 inches by that 11, because that's half of 22, but maybe we'll add a half for our seam allowances so we can make a nice finished edge like this as well. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make a 16 inch strip, which we just did, and now I'm gonna make two um, 11 and a half inch pieces, but always pay attention to the orientation of your print, making sure that you don't work yourself into some hot water. So again, I want to make sure that my design is working for me. And as I look at this, I realize, oh my goodness, the cars are going this way. So what I really now need to do is I need to make two 16 inch squares and then let those overlap. Watch this. We're just going to trim down this edge. I realized that as I was teaching all of you, so I cut that down now and actually I made the mistake earlier by making the square first and it probably just worked to my advantage because the print was in a different orientation. We sometimes call that railroading. At any rate, let's go ahead and pull this back over to that zero marker. Easy. Simple as pillow, hard as cutting. Silly. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and hit that 16 up here. Great. So what that did, created a nice piece of scrap over there, and now I have 16 inch squares. We can rotate these one more time. Let's make sure that the orientation is still good. So this is the top. I folded it over to check. This was the top also, as it should be. I'm gonna go here. Now I can come to my 11 and a half inch mark on the ruler, excuse me, on the mat, coming from my zero over, lining up that nice edge nice and straight. I'm gonna go ahead and cut through here like this. And now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and make ourselves some nice finished edges. I want one finished edge on what will be the top along here. So I'm gonna take that right now. I'm just gonna take it. I'm gonna to start to fold it over as I come to my sewing machine and I have a quarter inch edge guide and I just kinda of like to roll and roll just like that. Come underneath that presser foot and just go ahead and start to set that stitching. And now what we need is that same kind of fold over and seam, but on the opposite side. So now if that was technically at the top, 
I need to do it to the bottom edge here. So I'm just gonna make sure I've got that just right. As I come on over, I'm not worried about lining up the prints of the actual fabrics. That would take way too much calculations. Okay, so now you should have both pieces, both have their finishing edges for the sleeve that we'll go in and out through. Now let's take a moment and really make sure we're getting everything oriented correct now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my beautiful car, setting it right sides up in front of me. Sorry if it's upside down over there. Now I'm gonna take right sides together and I'm gonna line this up and this is the top because the bottom is hemmed. So I'm gonna line that up on the corners just like that. Then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna make sure it's also right sides together. I'm gonna to line it up. Stick a few pins through it. And I like to put those pins in a little ways and basically in the center to hold the panels all in place and now I'm going to show you this really cool trick for getting those corners to look nice and not billow out or dog ear out so much in those corners. So it's a kind of a proportion trick and I don't really know the exact formula but my mom had a fantastic shop and we had these cool pillow forms in there and what they do is they talk about how we're going to kind of angle cut these corners off a bit. So in the sample I just did, like I said, it was a 16 inch pillow form. The first thing I did is on one of our fabrics, I'm going to go ahead and I think maybe to make life a little bit easier right now, we're just going to flip this over so we're only looking at the single edge piece of fabric. Doesn't matter. And we're going to make small markings so it won't show through. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to each corner and I'm going to measure over one inch and then I'm going to measure over five inches on both edges. So now I'm going to come down one inch and I'm going to come down to the five inch mark. After you do that, before you cut anything, I need you to draw a line connecting those two marks. So from my five up to my one, and then over here from my one over to my five. We're gonna do that on all four sides, okay? Once you have the lines drawn in and you have to draw the lines, don't ask me how I know this. You gotta draw the lines first because that makes the cut so much easier. Use your ruler, protect your hand, and get yourself a really nice straight cut And now you can see I can still follow the line I drew because I wouldn't be able to because I cut the other corner off already. Okay, so this is how we're actually going to handle the pivot or the corner and make that look sharp. So we're just going to go ahead and we can do them all together. I'm in no hurry today. Okay. So again, one inch over, five inches over, one inch down, five inches down, make your marks. Connect the lines from ones to fives, creating a nice gradual angle to lob the corners off. I do like using this fine tip Sharpie marker. Makes life easy because it makes a nice fine edge up against the ruler and I'm not transferring the ink on the ruler and then other places I don't want it. Ones to fives, fives to ones. Ooh, let's get a nice drawn line though. Again, now that those lines are drawn, we're gonna go ahead and cut through them. And really the lesson's over for the day. I'm gonna sew it together with you, don't worry about that. I don't want you tearing away without me here. But yes, as we cut through these lines, and because we've already made the exit plan when we made that sleeve, we are all but finished there, folks.
Okay, so now my square-ish pillow form actually has a little bit more character. I'm gonna flip it back over so I can pay attention to where the pins are. And as I go over to the sewing machine, I'm gonna treat myself to starting right on in front or on top of one of these edges, one of those hems that we've already created. Now, as I sew through this, I'm just gonna let that edge guide follow. I've got a quarter inch seam going. And as I come into where it bends, I'm basically gonna respect the quarter inch, let it move over. Now I'm gonna follow that edge. It's just another straight line. We cut and we drew straight lines. We cut straight lines into the corner. Maybe one more stitch. It looks like I could actually use one more stitch. There it is. And we're just gonna do this all the way around. Easy, easy. If there's a pin in the way, pull it out. Never stitch over a pin. I think I need one more stitch there too. Okay, here we go. Yep. Ooh, and that one I went a little too far. So now all I have to do is actually back up a stitch or two. Now I can come into it. And when I pivot, that'll still compensate for that. And look at that, I'm right back here at the end, coming down the track, hitting that last corner. Oh my goodness, back stitching for the checkered flag. I love it, folks. Now let's not get too carried away. We still got some safety gear in place. We don't wanna get too stuck on this too fast, right? Oh, the puns are terrible today, but let's see how awesome this looks. Okay, so we're turning it right sides out. Now, I want your corners to be crisp. I just didn't want them to really dog ear long. So I'm gonna still use my finger. I'm kind of tracing that seam allowance. I'm pushing on it nice in there. I can tell I'm gonna love this. Okay, like yay. Perfect. Now, uh, we're gonna, and don't you ever remove the tag. Don't remove the tags. Why is that funny? Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to place my pillow form in here. Now this pillow form happens to be like a down pillow form, so it's got a little bit more character, AKA lump, and so I can just gonna work it into place ever so nice, just like that. Oh yeah, she's a beaut. Look at that. And again, I'm so amazed and impressed with the print quality. This stuff looks incredible, but yet it still feels awesome, right? Perfect, perfect, perfect. So yes, this is the fantastic new MG fabric from Michael Miller Fabrics. This is awesome. We have five prints for you to play with and choose from. I'm sure I'll be doing more with it, but I just couldn't wait to share with you. And uh, hey, you know, as much as I love all of the feedback and all the comments, and we usually talk about fabric and stuff, let's have some fun today. In the comments below, I would love to know what your first automobile was. Mine certainly was not an MG convertible. It was a Honda Accord. Nice and safe, loved it, drove it for a year, and then I went four by four. Anyways, I'd love to hear from all of you. We love having you right here at Making It Fun. We will see you real soon, but I wanna know, what was your first automobile? <laughs> Action shot, whoa, look at that. Turned out fantastic, oh yeah. Awesome. Hey, for more great tutorials, please hit the subscribe button, that little bell to be notified, and we'll see you in another tutorial real soon.